Welcome to the Spirited Conversation podcast, Straight Talk, Served Neat. Join us to hear from business leaders, entrepreneurs, and industry insiders as they discuss their stories and insights for success. Now, share spirit and make a toast as you immerse yourself in the conversation. Here's your host and Chief Libation Officer, Tony DeBlau. Hello, everybody. My name is Tony DeBlau, and I'm the Chief Education Officer of Spirit of Conversation. And today, I am very excited to be joined by A.J. Hohalter, who is the producer of a very awesome documentary on bourbon called Neat, something that uh, I've been looking forward to for quite a long time. And so I'm very excited to share with the Spirit of Conversation audience A.J.'s journey to creating the movie, some of the insights that he's learned both as somebody who's involved with doing a film for the first time, but also sort of the entrepreneurial spirit behind what he learned going through and talking to all of the many voices and many stories and experiences uh, behind the film. AJ, welcome. Hey, thanks so much. Appreciate it. So, so AJ, I was doing a little bit of you know, research on you know, how you and uh, your partner, I guess David, really mm-hmm. kind of came around the concept of doing a film like this. Can you walk through that thought, sort of that epiphany that, hey, this would be a good movie to make? Yeah. Well, it, like any good idea, it came as a joke at first. Um, so I'm a composer by trade. I write music for films. That's my day job. And I'm from Kentucky, live in Kentucky, been here since I was a little kid. So um, David, our director, used to hire me uh, to score his films. So we were, I believe, in Philadelphia for a film festival, and I had brought bourbon because that's, you know, that's where I'm from. That's what you do. And to celebrate this film festival, we had, you know, in the hotel afterwards that we're sharing a bourbon. And we, he asked questions, what's the difference between this and other whiskeys? And I kind of knew, and it was just kind of like this, this added bonus of this fun weekend we had. And then met again a couple months later, brought another bourbon. And the joke was thrown out, hey, we should make a movie about this. Uh, there's a lot here. There's a lot here. It's, a, it's an American thing. You know, each time we had met, we'd learned stuff in between in the interim about it. And um, so I went back to Kentucky, and I'm from Lexington, and actually started making some plans and started calling around to see who we might talk to to get into places and called up David and um, have a crew here with my neighbor and my, my brother-in-law, Corey, and, and Gannon that, are also producers on the film, and we called David and said, hey, you know what, remember that joke uh, about a bourbon film? I think we've got some headway uh, to do that. Do you really want to do that? And that was kind of the start of it. Oh, that's great. Well, you know, what, what an ambitious project, because one of the film notes says, uh, you know, this is history in a glass. And I yeah. think uh, taking on that sort of mantle of being able to express that sentiment how did you start to think about that? How did you start to piece this together uh, as you were, you know, securing people to talk to so that you could really do justice to that statement? Yeah. Well, really, more than anything, we needed to learn first. Uh, none of us were connoisseurs. None of us were uh, really, really deep into it enough to have a really tight grasp on every nitty <laughs> gritty detail of it. So um, when you, yeah, you name something neat, the story of bourbon, it is a very uh, daunting thing to fill, but we did it just by asking really kind of simple questions um, of very knowledgeable and passionate people. And um, as we began to learn, okay, this is uh, integral to the United States, and it is uh, here's how it's different from whiskey, and uh, and you know, here are all the things that make it what it is, and here's how long it's been going on, and we started to connect certain themes, regardless of if that person was a tour guide or a master distiller or made a barrel, made barrels, they all spoke with such romantic love (laughs) for the spirit. Like it was, there was another, it was, there was another dimension to it besides the physical, like, you know, facts, the ABCs of, of what it is. There was like this time capsule type nature that everyone, regardless of who you were talking to, was tapping into. And so that caused us to step back and say, okay, bourbon is popular now. It hasn't always been popular, and it might not be popular in the future, but what is 
who is the person of bourbon that makes it this special character, regardless of if people are adopting to it or not. So uh, obviously we had to focus on the history because that is, you know, the first part of, you know, that's where you have to start. Um, and we have to explain, you know, so we had history, we had process, and then we had these characters that would tap into kind of that heart, the why of bourbon. Uh, what is it about bourbon that you know, kind of creates this different atmosphere when it's enjoyed correctly? Um, so it was a lot of just, you know, it took us three years to make it. So it wasn't like we <laughs> had our had our uh, screenplay written in the first, you know, month or so. We kind of had to learn and just kind of go through the lumps of, of figuring out for ourselves first kind of what that story was. And through that, you know, exploration of sort of learning, you know, yourself to be able to, you know, put that art, you know, on the screen, a lot of the conversation, I mean, certainly one of the big themes, and you just mentioned that, is this idea of bourbon is about fellowship. And it's mm -hmm. you know, one of the few spirits that really, of all of them, have those powerful imagery around enjoying and sharing as much as the markets exploded and, you know, myself included and more on the collector side oftentimes, um, you know, than, than actually maybe sharing it. Uh, what, what did you learn about that side of the bourbon, that, that, that fellowship, this idea that was also shared in the movie about, you know, bourbon is eternal. How did that particular insight start to affect the lens that you used when you were shooting this or talking with others? Yeah, well, I think you get a little bit, like I said, from every person you interview, but there were certain interviewers or interviewees, uh, Marianne Barnes, the master distiller out of Castle and Key, and then Freddie Johnson, he's a tour guide at uh, Buffalo Trace. They spoke, of course, you know, Marianne is entering her journey, right, into bourbon. She is just now starting out. She's in her 20s. She is putting her first barrel away that won't even be bourbon and won't even be ready for a few years, even after release of this movie. So we're talking to someone like that, who's talking forward, talking about the future. And then at the same time, we're interviewing Freddie Johnson, who is in his 70s, has been around, his family's been around at Buffalo Trace for three generations, and he's talking about bourbon, and he's just talking backwards, he's talking about the past, he's talking about what he's learned, he's talking about. So we start, through that kind of dichotomy, we start seeing, okay, like bourbon is eternal because it's got this like forward, uh, like hope mentality to it this perennial, like, think about this, and this is, this is all, you know, all coming to us all at once, and only now can we kind of order this out and make sense of it, but um, the things that make bourbon bourbon are all perennial ingredients that nature is in charge of, right? So you've got the corn that grows during a season and dies during a season. You've got the trees that are made in the barrels that grow, and then, you know, winter, all the leaves come off, and, like, so you have all of these very fragile pieces that are all natural. You can't anything to it. It rains, it, it, you know, at certain times it doesn't rain at other times. And then once it's all compiled, you give it to time itself to make it. So it does have this forward future, hope for spring type mentality that we were getting from Marianne. But it also does have this, like, remember when this barrel went into the Rick House, what was going on type you know, past nature to it as well that we were getting from Freddie. This is tour guide. So um, that those are kind of the two interviews that really gave us the the weight of like you were saying the fellowship. So when you enjoy a spirit that has that origin and it has that dynamic to it, the forwards and backwards kind of timeline, it causes you to talk deep. It causes you to, if you're experiencing it and you're really appreciating something, to think, hey, what was I doing 15 years ago when this was just, you know, moonshine, basically. So it, it uh, those were the two interviews that they, that idea spawned from. And then, of course, once you kind of have that mindset, each interview you're talking to just further, um, if you're listening for it, further kind of backed up that, that mentality of bourbon is a it's a relational thing because it's, it's built on a good relationship, the relationship between the seasons and the barrel. Like the relationship is what makes the spirit what it is, and you should experience it in the same, in the same environment. Yeah, absolutely. And I would imagine that, you know, being this is your, for you, first, you know, full-length, you know, featured, you know, documentary, 
um, interesting to learn about how much bourbon maker, whiskey makers, distillers, you know, were sort of these early entrepreneurs, you know, this kind of trade. Wow. What insight did you learn for yourself as, you know, a, as an entrepreneur, somebody who's, you know, been sort of working on all these projects on your own, very, you know, working with music mainly. What what did you learn for yourself that you, you know, kind of took away as, as an entrepreneur? Yeah, just to trust the people that work around you. Uh, Mary Ann had a great statement where she says, you know, at the very end of the movie, she's kind of concluding her thoughts of like, you know, I've created this thing that is just going to sit and hopefully be good one day. And I have to trust that the farmer who grew my grain and the guy who built the barrel, I have to trust that everything we did is going to create something amazing in the end. And that really resonated with me because as someone who's taking three years to make a film that hasn't seen the light of day yet, to know that, like, okay, a lot of work has been put into this, a lot of thought, a lot of craft, but at the end of the day, I, had, I have to trust that the people involved in this film and the, and the attention to detail that we paid will hopefully translate. And just that I'm sitting on something for a really long time and who knows if it will succeed or fail mentality that every bourbon maker, because of that time aspect of, of aging, um, that was very, uh, that hit home with me as someone who, you know, will work on a film score for six months. And then six months later, once I've kind of forgotten that I wrote that music, people start hearing it. And it's just that trust of, oh, like as it resurfaces and as that season of work starts actually seeing the public, you just kind of have to trust that, you know, it, that you did your best and that you trust the system to, you know, to accept it. So I, I, I really, that's kind of where I perked up and where it really addressed my, my creative uh, where I'm at right now. Yeah, and it's really interesting how, you know, this thread of time weaves in and out of so many projects like this, uh, you know, where you just, you think it's something, you know, it's your, you know, blood, sweat, and tear equity uh, turning into something, you know, meaningful. I'm curious, I saw that it's, you know, obviously very well reviewed so far. How has, uh, you know, the industry and others taken to the film? Have you received you know, feedback from, say, you know, the Jim Russells of the world and others yeah. who felt that you did a good job uh, accurately portraying sort of their view of bourbon and distilling? Yeah. I mean, we've heard from um, most every distillery because a lot of these people had seen it before. Um, it hit on February 20th where it hit visually. We had a kind of a, a family screening, if you will, of everyone in the film um, that it came into Lexington to see it in the theater. And and so I got to talk to a lot of people after that. And, yeah, I mean, it's we, – we were very – we knew the position that we were in, kind of the, the uh, awkward position we were in to not kind of just run with one distillery or one company's story or to run with, um, you know, promoting one brand over another. I've got an Excel spreadsheet on my computer that's just – every time we've mentioned, shown, or interviewed someone, what company owns that bourbon and make sure it's even, you know, to – so we did not want to be guilty of kind of running with one one over the other, um, but that was so. That's the one thing I was kind of nervous about making it, and we got great response from everyone on you captured the heart of bourbon, the essence of bourbon. Now you didn't get deep into all these myths or stories during prohibition and all these things that you know could have made an interesting film that we kind of considered at first. You know, we we kind of glanced past prohibition because the story of bourbon that's that's a blip. But that's the story of alcohol. Like alcohol as a whole was gone and then came back. But what, what did bourbon do specifically, and when did it come back, and how did it survive and all that? So we did get some great one-liners. You know, certain ones stick out to me of, you know, you capture the heart of bourbon. That's required viewing for every Kentuckian and everyone who's ever said that they like bourbon. Um, so, so far, so good. And, you know, we're kind of in that niche of everyone that's seen it and have, has really – um, maybe seen it more than once and been around it a lot are all very deep into the bourbon game. So with those people, I think we uh, we did what we were supposed to, and it, we wanted this to be a film whether you were obsessed with bourbon or didn't even know what it was, you could appreciate the heart behind it and the hard work behind it. Um, and so some of the I've been reading some of the iTunes reviews here and there, and we have gotten a lot of you know I don't even drink, but I was impacted by this film, and I do know that bourbon is not just another 
not just another liquor now. This is a this is a heritage and a way of life and a, and a story that I was impacted by. So that's I mean that's the best we could do. That's all we can ask for is that the story would connect with people and regardless of if the subject matter is applicable to their hobbies or interests. And does the story continue or how are you looking at sort of your next project? You know, that's I've been getting that question a lot and I don't really know how to answer that question other than we want to see how this goes. Um, we're in the first two weeks of release right now, so we're getting great response. But there are a lot more stories to Bourbon, and we have a lot more footage. Um, so I don't know the most responsible way to follow up with people. And, like, we kind of, in the film, kind of left some stories untold. So um, we're seeing if, if we can <laughs> – I don't know. We're, we're, in a, we're in a fun spot right now to work kind of – we're seeing what the opportunities of this first release – what kind of sets us up for, for something down the future. But as of now, um, we, we don't want to be done in the bourbon industry. We, we love the people we've gotten to meet and the people that run these companies are just the, the best people to work with. They're so humble, so easy to work with. Um, we'll find any excuse to stick around a little longer if, if we can <laughs> find that excuse. That's great. And, and, and AJ, I have a sort of final question here. And normally, uh, when I have guests, I choose a bourbon for them. So before I ask this last question, my understanding is Jefferson's 18-year-old Presidential Reserve is your go-to yes. special occasion. You know so uh, let's uh, pretend we're having a virtual toast. That certainly is in my collection. It's one of my favorites as well. Yeah. So, uh, with the you know virtual toast in hand here, my my final question to you is. If you could have a drink with anyone, who would it be and why? Mm, man, I would have to say, man, that's a great question. I would have a drink with Hans Zimmer, who is a very great film composer, because I would want to A, learn from him, but B, I'd want to know what he thought of the score to me because <laughs> that was a tough one for me not to make it sound too processed. I wanted to make it sound dry and natural, and I want to know if a big-time professional would have agreed with how I did it. So that will be my answer. But right. Well, cheers. Thank you, AJ. I mean, you really have made a fantastic movie. I mean, just speaking to someone like me who, again, I've been waiting for this to come out for a long time, uh, you know, from the early, uh, you know, hints that it was being made. Uh, I'm really excited with the finished product. Uh, I agree that, you know, as somebody who has not yet visited Kentucky, so I'll look you up when I finally get out there. Uh, Great. Is, Please do. You know, <clears throat> that, that feeling that uh, it really is so unique amongst all of the different, you know, spirits, I mean, across the board, bourbon, remains, you know, that sort of has that mystique, uniquely American, um, and I'm just so thankful to you and your crew for uh, deciding to embark on this story and creating such a wonderful film. So thank you again. I really appreciate your, uh, you know, your creative license and efforts in doing that. Hey, well, thank you. I, we really appreciate it and are thankful that you are giving it a watch. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed the conversation. For show notes and to get more insights from entrepreneurs and spirit lovers alike, please visit spiritedconversation.biz.